Yeah, we're deciding to get outside today. It is snowing a little bit here in Anchorage, Alaska. Uh, let's see if I can get you a decent zoom of the city behind me. Uh, right now, I'm just outside of the Anchorage port. Let's see if I can get the camera to flip around. And right over here, this is where all our container ships come in. And this is the ocean. And right now, this is one of the highest tides I've ever seen here in Alaska. But get this all started here. Uh, this is a 2000 Jeep Wrangler. I just purchased this not too long ago in my weight loss journey. And the reason I purchased this is to hopefully help keep me in check because 48 weeks ago when I first started losing weight, I could not fit inside this Jeep at all. I mean, it was, it was absolutely impossible. My legs were too fat. I couldn't get inside here. And we're gonna get inside, it's a little windy out, so I'm pretty sure the audio is relatively horrible. But yeah, I could not get inside this thing. And now I got tons of room. I mean, my belly would have been up against this steering wheel and my legs would have been so incredibly fat, I wouldn't have been able to fit in this Jeep. So the main reason I got it is to hopefully help uh, with my overall weight loss journey and keep me motivated to stay small. But in today's live stream, I did want to take you guys out and about. I am feeling a little bit under the weather um, and that has to do with, uh, I started a fast on, I think it was Tuesday and then I wound up, uh, let's see, I'm edging, edging to you right now, right on. Yeah, there's other people down here too right at the moment. So we're going to get this thing plugged in because I don't want my battery to die uh, during this live stream. And this mirror is definitely in the way. So that might help a little bit. And we'll shut the, I think I got the fan shut off. But this Jeep is a little bit loud. It does sound um, kind of like a diesel. It's one of the older Jeeps with the old AMC motors. And uh, it, has, it has some quirks. It has some problems but it just runs, it runs fantastic. And uh, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty happy with the purchase so far. Uh, let's see, uh, where are you heading? Well, <clears throat> I kind of bounced down this road here. Uh, this is a boat launch uh, right in front of me. Uh, we'll flip you around so you guys can see what I got going on here. But this is actually a boat launch and we're down here by the Anchorage port. And this road is absolutely miserable getting down here. So I might've made some poor judgment on coming down here because it's gonna be a bumpy ride out of here. But well, we're gonna cruise on out of here. And that's the boat launch right there. And you can't even you can't even see the boat launch uh, because it's underwater. Like I said, this is one of the highest tides I have seen in a long time. Because out through here, uh, this area out in front of me, um, this is typically a pretty, pretty flat, muddy area in the summertime. And there's a lot of grass that grows up in here. So we're going to get on out of here and show you guys around Anchorage and what's going on right now. And it just seems like this summer, we are never going to get a break with all of this, uh, all this dang snow and wet weather. So there's a guy over there picking the pussy willows off the uh, tree branches. There was another gentleman down here eating lunch. And a lot of people that work close to here at the rail yard and the uh, container yard and stuff like that, they like to come down here and take their lunch break and just kind of chill out. But right ahead of you there, uh, off to the right, uh, that's the Hilton. That's uh, one of the major hotels we have here that tourists like to stay in when they're here in Anchorage. But like I said, I just started a fast on Tuesday and I'm trying to get over this uh, the seasonal cold. Now I've been joking around online uh, with some other channels saying that I, I most likely got the bird flu because if you haven't heard anything about the bird flu lately it's it's the new thing on the radar. Uh, all the news media is trying to scare the crap out of everybody saying it's going to be worse than the COVID pandemic and everybody's going to get the bird flu yada 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 and uh, it's just it's just one of those things we got to deal with but this is where it starts getting bumpy some of these bumps are really bad. <coughs> I was actually doing like a slow crawl just to get in here. It wouldn't be a good place to come. Oh, yeah, that's a, even in a Jeep, it's kind of rough. But we'll try to bounce our way out of here. 
And this is also part of a container yard down on the end here. And this is this is where my wife likes to fish, uh, right in these areas. And right underneath us, going across this bridge, is a is a creek that we can fish for salmon, king salmon, silver salmon. Oh, uh, we can. You don't get too many reds in here. But this is where she does a lot of her fishing because it's literally like 15 minutes away from our house. And a lot of the locals here in Anchorage like to come down here and fish. Plus the uh, the tourists can get a chance to come down here and also try and fish because there's a, there's a rental shop around the corner that rents out rods and reels. And oh my goodness. Ugh. Yeah, they'll, they'll be taking care of this. Uh, little bumpy path here before long before the fishing season starts and it'll be a lot less rough holy cow Ugh. goodness now this is where we got to be careful because there's these big giant forklifts that like to cross this path right here so and then also we have the train uh, that can be in motion at times so anytime you come down here you just want to be cautious of big giant forklifts heavy truck traffic and the trains moving around because you know they're constantly moving around through here either going to the anchorage port or coming out uh going up north to uh fairbanks or sometimes down to seward but we're gonna head on up into downtown anchorage and i'll, I'll show you guys around a little bit if you're interested if you guys want to hang out stick around i didn't really need to stop there but you just never know so again we're crossing over ship creek right now once again uh, the alaska railroad terminal is right off to our right hand side right now and typically even in the summertime this is a nice place to come down here it's, it's just nice and quiet except for the uh, trains going back and forth when the trains come back and forth they're always honking their horns and stuff so it gets incredibly loud and we're going to cross these railroad tracks and we're going to head straight on up the hill here. And if you look straight ahead, we've got a homeless population here in Anchorage that's just starting to outnumber the regular residents. And, uh, this is just one of the many places in front of us they like to get set up. We've got homeless everywhere in this town. And there was, a, there was a time I was trying to get a blanket drive going. Uh, blankets for kids. I almost had that opportunity, but I missed the boat. Um, I had a I had a container held on reserve uh, that was just full of blankets from southern Mexico, and they were going to ship them up here. It was about twenty thousand dollars I was going to pay out of my own pocket and then donate those blankets to uh, you know kids that are having a hard time, just so young children can have a blanket or donate them to the homeless or something like that. It was just something I wanted to do, something I still want to do. I don't know if I'm ever going to have the chance to do it or if I'm going to be financially stable enough to make that happen. But absolutely, something that's on my radar for things to do later on in life. But now we're heading up into downtown Anchorage. Got a lot of traffic in the downtown area. But yeah, guys, like I said, even when I got sick on the carnivore diet, it, it, what a difference, I tell you. Uh, especially compared to being regular sick on the standard American diet. I mean, I can't, I, I can't express just how different it is compared to actually, you know, being sick eating the other way. Because I would be completely immobile right now. I mean, I did have some instances where, you know, I did feel like, oh, I just don't want to move or I don't want to go out and do anything. Um, but I was still functional. And every time I've been sick on the carnivore diet, I have been able to actually function. I've been able to go to work. I've been able to get over whatever illnesses I've had in relatively short time. So like this is Friday. I'm pretty much over whatever bug I had that would normally knock me down for about two to three weeks in a matter of three to four days. I mean, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. So we're gonna head around the corner here. This is another outlook you can uh, see out on the ocean. In the summertime, it's really beautiful, but today it's cloudy. So we're just gonna cruise around. Uh, we're gonna turn left here on 4th Avenue. 
and this is where the Iditarod start happens for those of you that are interested but right now it's pretty quiet the tourists haven't come up here yet they will start heading up here uh, closer to the end of May and this this whole area will just be covered and people walking around and doing stuff all the snow is going to be gone uh, there's going to be a lot more foot traffic and let's see if this guy's going to pull out in front of me oh all right well this is just a nice place to cruise around there's a bunch of stuff to do here if you're just walking around the anchorage area you can get out and you can go to so many different little stores and this is kind of like the area in hawaii that's like a tourist attraction so this is where people would come and buy their little trinkets and stuff you know just walk around in all these little stores and there's the uh, different bars and restaurants all kinds of stuff here in the city it's, it's kind of fun and unfortunately i'm gonna have to show you guys the wipers every so often hey amber hi donna i appreciate you guys jumping in the stream i mean i hope you guys enjoy this little ride around town i couldn't think of anything else to do i am fasting today i started fasting again last night at six o'clock because i was starting to feel a little bit better and figured i'd do another at least another 36 hour fast uh, before tomorrow before i start filming tomorrow's video and doing the update now the annoying part about this part of town is these traffic lights are not really set up to just cruise on through here <coughs> i do have a cough a little bit of phlegm but it's it's nothing like it would have been beforehand when I was just eating crap food. If I was eating seed oils, inflammatory products, and stuff like that. Yeah, Anchorage is an awesome place there. Uh, Whiteout, that's cool. That's a cool handle. I like the way you got it spelled there. Yeah, take off. There we go. We got some ambulances, and fire trucks over there. Yeah, you just never know what you're gonna find. You know, idling around downtown. Off to the right here. That's a uh, another very popular gift store um, that the tourists like to to ravage through and if you're ever up here just be careful about what you're purchasing because a lot of these products come straight out of china and you want to make sure you're getting alaskan quality type gifts to bring home because anybody can make something that says alaska on it and have it made on amazon or whatever and shipped here and it just yeah don't be duped by uh, little deals like that you got some fur traders over on the right but yeah, it's a pretty cool place. We got our homeless people everywhere. Homeless people are just taking over the whole the whole city lately. It's kind of sad. There's not a whole lot we can do about it since the drugs and fentanyl seem to be something that's taking over our, our wonderful city. And it wasn't this bad years ago. It was it was pretty nice up here. Uh, we did have a, a regular homeless population, but then all of a sudden after the pandemic, it just exploded. It's like everybody had to, you know, get involved with drugs and, and fentanyl really, really screwed up everybody's situation. Uh, still looks cold there. Right now, I think it's around 38 degrees. Like I said, it's snowing a little bit. It's, it's not bad, but it is a little windy outside. The last couple of days have been windy. And then of course we got this snow and then a few days ago we had we had snow early in the week which created just nothing but glare ice all over the place and i didn't go outside that day because i wasn't feeling good i was my head was bobbly i didn't want to go out and do anything but yeah i just i always wanted to do a live stream similar to this i just didn't know how it was going to work uh, because sometimes these lives get uh, pixelated when we're out moving around and I'm hoping you know that the audio quality and the video quality is pretty decent so this is a basic experiment on you know, hopefully something I can do and we can do later on uh, when the Iditarod happened I did a live stream here in town and that went pretty well we're gonna turn down here Did you guys flipped around again uh, this is Fifth Avenue. We're gonna head back downtown to give you guys a nice little view of what downtown Anchorage looks like right now. But the sidewalks are pretty much cleared off now, which is nice because we had so much snow this winter, you couldn't barely walk on any of these sidewalks. It was horrible, absolutely horrible. 
Wow. I wish we had some sunshine. This place is really pretty when we got a lot of sunshine. We got these nice little walkways that can take us from the uh, parking garage uh, over to, uh, I think this is like a, actually that's the Fifth Avenue Mall. So that's kind of handy. I think I'm in the wrong lane for cruising through here at a nice pace because sometimes these people want to park over here on the left and that'll tie me up here. That's okay. We're not paying attention to the camera. We're just letting it run. I mean, whatever happens there. Hey, Bill Knott's in the room. Hey, I thank you for joining me, Bill Knott. I do appreciate all your advice and all your help. Uh, Bill's been tremendously helpful throughout my weight loss journey. He, he definitely chimes in at the most opportune moments and keeps me going and uh, also helps me out with uh, basic ideas and stuff like that for what to do next or, you know, products I might be inclined to purchase because you know these things have helped him he started out at over 700 pounds and i think that's amazing that he's been able to actually drop the weight and maintain a decent weight loss because that's that's the overall goal here is we're, we're trying to get healthy we're trying to lose weight um, we're all part of the same community so we support each other all the time and there's a lot of other carnivore channels out there that i support regularly and there are also channels that i try to support you know, when they're doing their own feeds, their live feeds, their videos and stuff like that, because that's, that's pretty much how we learn and grow. And we're gonna take a right, nope, sorry, they left the turn up here. I don't know my rights from left today. Then we're gonna take you back on through up 6th Avenue. And I don't know where else to take you guys today. I mean, it's just, uh, you know, like I said, this was an experiment I wanted to take my carnivore friends out and show them, you know, hey, this is what we're doing here in Anchorage, Alaska. This is what it looks like. Alaska is a beautiful place, even on a crappy day. And it's just a matter of trying to get out and do stuff. Now, about two months ago, uh, this was before I purchased that vibration plate, you know, that we talked about from, uh, from Life Pro. I could not hardly get out and walk and do anything. I couldn't hardly, you know, walk a mile. I mean, walking a mile, I could do it, but I'd come home in so much pain uh, that it just wasn't fun. It just wasn't fun to go out for walks anymore. And since I started losing weight, and I tried pushing early on in my weight loss journey, so I was about 400 pounds trying to lose weight, and I was trying to get out and walk because that's what everybody said. All the all the geniuses out there on the internet said you need to get out and walk more to lose weight well when you're 400 pounds 500 pounds 600 pounds if you can just get up and go to the restroom and wipe your own behind you're you're a step ahead of the game but i was to that point where i could hardly wipe my own butt i also had a problem with uh you know, sitting down for long periods of time, standing up for too long was near impossible. And if I did it, I would be absolutely crippled by the time I got done. So having steady movement. Uh, so when I started losing weight, I was uh, actually employed with a company called O'Reilly's Auto Parts. And I was an auto parts delivery boy. And that worked out pretty good for getting everything going because it was just enough movement and just enough sitting time in between the movement that I could actually, you know, give my feet a break. But at the end, by the end of the day, when I got home, I was a complete wreck. My feet hurt. <coughs> it was very hard for me to take showers uh, because my feet hurt so bad. And uh, yeah, it was just a miserable time because I had uh, I had neuropathy. My feet felt like I was. Uh, standing on pins and needles all the time it was really really painful <coughs> <coughs> well i apologize for the coughing guys but yeah like i said i just got over the the seasonal bird flu garbage whatever it is <coughs> and i did pack some electrolytes today because i knew i was going to be coming out of the house i grabbed my water bottle <coughs> My other bottle. There we go. <coughs> I'm having a hard time negotiating my new backpack. Hey, we're going to 
gonna turn right down Cordova Street. <clears throat> this is the street that one of my grandmas lives on. She's had a house here since like forever. Uh, my grandfather actually built the house you know, from the ground up and he chose a specific part of town in Anchorage because he's a pretty smart man. Uh, over here on this side of town is exactly where the earthquakes don't tend to really disturb a lot of the homes. And when the big quake happened, you know, the one that destroyed half of downtown Anchorage, uh, this house was just fine. It didn't shake at all. It was, uh, well, it shook, but it, it didn't suffer any damage because it's built on, uh, it's built on pretty solid ground over here. And he, yeah, totally, totally smart man for building a house over here. Because so far, as far as I know, the majority of these homes right here in this area did not suffer any damage uh, from any of the earthquakes we've had. They've all just kind of hung in there. We got a lot of old homes over here that have just been around since forever. But this little rise up here is where Grandma's house is at. And as far as I know, it's never once changed in elevation uh, anytime we've had an earthquake. Now off to the right, down, down lower, it has. But this one little plateau right here, it's just stayed the same. Grandma's house is over there, over there on the left-hand side. I don't know if they're still living there, but that house has been there for a long time. I don't, I don't talk to my grandma anymore. I miss her, but um, me and her had a falling out, and along with my aunt and stuff like that. So let's see where else we can take you and hopefully try to keep you somewhat entertained on the little journey we got going on here we got 13 people in the stream uh if you're new here jumping in i'm big john at big man alaska i talk about mainly weight loss my weight loss journey carnivore topics uh we do a little alaskan adventures every now and then and we like to get out and just enjoy mother nature at times and my wife she has her own fishing channel at real alaska fishing real Alaskan fishing and the real part is uh, spelled R-E-E-L if anybody's interested in uh, what my wife does <clears throat> we've been we've been posting content for a good long while and it's just something we do we're boring that's boring yeah all right let's fit me around and look at me all right Donna I wonder if that's because they were ordered through Amazon and not directly I don't know what the conversation is I can't read that because I'm driving Gonna turn here. We're gonna head on over towards the airport area. Now I do like the south side of town. The south side of town here in Anchorage, Alaska is absolutely gorgeous. And that's where we ended up when we moved out of Wasilla, Alaska. So we moved to the south side of town. And I really liked it over there. It's the newer part of Anchorage. Uh, so everything is really uppity and kind of beautiful looking. Um, there's, there are homeless people over there too, but there's a lot less homeless people on the south side of town. But the weather, the wind, can kind of just rip right through there. It gets kind of scary. All right. So that, here we go. Ooh, we're on C Street now. C Street is one of those streets where if you're driving a big truck, uh, most of us that drive trucks here in Anchorage, Alaska, we try to avoid this street because the, the lights, they're really not timed well uh, for big trucks and we gotta constantly stop and start. I mean, it's just one of those roads that if you're looking for problems in the winter time, you know, like getting into accidents or something like that, this is the road that we try to avoid. We'll actually go, you know, three to four minutes out of our way just avoid this particular road right here because you know the geniuses that set up these traffic lights really don't have a clue you know as far as uh, you know what truck drivers go through in this city <clears throat> but yeah so when when me and the wife were out years ago uh, like before the pandemic we used to come out here just drive around town just wander around in the Jeep with the family we'd play Pokemon Go with the kids and you know, get out of the car in downtown and go for walks and stuff like that. And that was a struggle because I was so fat. Even then, I lived most of my life 
uh, while living up here in Alaska, I was wearing Carhartt bib overalls because I couldn't wear pants and sit down and do my job for a long period of time. It hurt too much. And since I lost over 130 pounds, it's been so much nicer, you know, to be actually fit into different clothes and get out and do stuff like this, you know, wearing just regular pants and maybe a regular button up shirt. And when I used to go out to eat, I had a problem uh, going out to eat. I mean, not only that, I was I was horribly fat. I was a I was a binge eater. But my biggest problem was is fitting in the booths. I used to get cranky when I'd sit in these uh, restaurant booths because a booth is way more comfortable than sitting in a chair. But I used to think they were making the booths smaller and smaller and smaller. When I when all actuality, I was just getting fatter and fatter and fatter. I mean, it was just crazy, you know, how the mindset works when you're morbidly obese. You know, you're, you're chronically depressed. Your anxiety level goes through the roof. I mean, trying to do stuff like this here, do a live stream and talk to people, was next to impossible. I just couldn't do it. I had a hard time just trying to keep it all together, let alone complete complete a sentence, you know, with sound, without sounding like a bumbling idiot. But, yeah, we're heading south right now. I'll probably turn up Tudor. I wish we could see the mountains. It's kind of disappointing. I can't see any of the mountains. And when, and when the uh, clouds come in and it starts snowing again, it's like it'll never stop snowing this year. That we just can't see. Uh, let's see. Take, take care, everyone. Hey, Bill, thank you for dropping in. I appreciate you for being here. Uh, that means a lot to me that, that Bill showed up. I mean, I, I'd be interested in seeing if he could do a live stream at some time, but you know, I get out there in Willow, uh, the internet connection isn't always the greatest. Doing a live stream is kind of hard. Actually, uploading videos from Willow is, is kind of difficult at times too, because if you don't have a rock solid internet connection, it's really hard to, to do a live stream at all. And I was just hoping that this live stream here would be somewhat okay. I'll let you guys see, you know, what was going on here in town. Uh, let's see. I've heard from numerous people that their customer service is fantastic. I guess you guys are talking about Life Pro. I don't know. Uh, the company's website is always recommended. Uh, sometimes on Amazon you get secondhand merchandise. Yeah, that's a problem when you order off Amazon. Um, you got to double check who your seller is because you can get a lot of third party sellers on Amazon or resellers so don't always assume that if you order a product on Amazon that it's coming directly from the manufacturer to Amazon to you and that's something I ran into as well uh, especially when I was dealing with uh, some specific products over the over the period of time I've been dealing with Amazon because some of these products are absolute you know, some things that have been returned or somebody bought off a Amazon pallet and stuff like that. So, hey Lisa, thank you for jumping in. Yeah, we're just taking a ride around Anchorage, just showing you guys what's going on. You know, talking a little bit about what we got going on this week as far as the carnivore diet. You know, right now I'm fasting. And I figured since I was fasting, it would be a pretty boring live stream if I was gonna do it in the home probably can't make that out but in front of us is the mountains they're really far away you got a Carlisle truck if you're an ice road trucker there's a Carlisle truck since Carlisle got bought out not too long after the big ice road trucker thing uh, another company bought out Carlisle transportation uh, they got rid of like all the really good drivers. I mean, it was like they had laser focus on getting rid of the drivers from Carlisle, the good ones, the ones that have been around forever. So the company is is not the same company that it was during the Ice Road Trucker uh, History Channel adventures and stuff like that. I don't even know if Lisa Kelly still works for them, but possibly she might be invested into the company by now, but I don't know. I was, I used to have, used to keep in contact with Lisa Kelly years ago, but since then we, we don't talk much anymore. And uh, yeah, the situation didn't work out. 
working for Carlisle. Uh, I was one of the drivers they let go. And a lot of that had to do with some political issues that, that arose. No big deal. There's other, there's a lot of other companies up here we can work for. We don't have to work for just one. That's the nice part about being a truck driver. So, I'm just waiting for summertime to kick off. Because right now in Alaska, we have to, we're going through a process called breakup season in Alaska. That's literally just the ice and snow breaking up. And at the same time, the permafrost has to melt. And the permafrost is what's in the ground right now. And when that starts thawing out a little bit as it warms up here in Alaska, uh, the roads become soft in spots. So we have uh, weight restrictions on all the big trucks. So like, you know, these side dumps over here that just went by, you know, it, for a period of time up here, we can only haul like 75% of the regular load or 50% of the load, depending on the roads we're driving on. And that creates a slowdown in, in freight, a slowdown in gravel work, construction type work, because all the equipment that needs to be moved around up here in Alaska is heavy stuff. And that's what the road restrictions are there to prevent moving too many heavy pieces or heavy loads across soft roads and just absolutely destroying the roads. So it takes about two to three weeks for the road restrictions to come off and then it'll be, you know, everybody's going to be busy. I'm going to be incredibly busy. I don't know how much more, you know, how I can keep up with the channel and, uh, and stay connected. But if I go back to work for the, the same employer I worked for last uh, summer, then I'll have my weekends off. So I'll have Saturday and Sunday to make videos and then I'll be back to work on, on Monday at a regular schedule. And something I found out when losing weight is that it's so much easier to schedule what you want to do as far as weight loss when you have a steady schedule and you're not sitting at home. Now, if I'm sitting at home all the time, I have a hard time staying out of the feed bag. Like, I'm constantly wanting to make food. Even on the carnivore diet, I'm, I'm constantly wanting to make burgers. I want to make bacon, uh, sausage-type meals, um, just anything, cooking up ham and eggs. <coughs> I'm always looking for an excuse to cook something. And it's just crazy how much we like to... Uh, you know, that addiction, to just trying to get over that addiction to just constantly want to eat and feed ourselves all the time. It's really hard for me to get over that and wrap my mind around. And that's why I find it really important for me to do fasting once in a while. And when I fast for an extended period of time, it gives me enough time to actually reflect on, my, on myself, why I'm eating, uh, the types of stuff that I'm doing you know, to myself, even when I'm eating somewhat healthy. We're just heading up Tudor Road right now, for those of you interested in where we're going. Uh, the mountain range is, is straight ahead. And it's quite beautiful when it's sunny out. Now my back window of my home actually looks out towards these mountains. <coughs> but unfortunately in the morning is when the sun comes over these mountains. And it, it's horribly annoying having that sunshine coming straight in the bedroom when you're trying to sleep. So before long, the, the sun will start coming up a lot sooner. It's already setting around 9, 10 o'clock at night. So we're, we're gaining daylight daily. And as we gain daylight, we're going to lose a lot of this snow and this white stuff all around us. So, all right. Art Wax, not safe driver. Who's not a safe driver? We're just driving around. Uh, anyways. <coughs> uh. Yeah. Like right, getting over this crud, I thought it would be a lot easier. I wanted to go for a walk today, but it's windy and it's cold out, so I don't want to make my sickness any worse than it is. So we're just going to kind of cruise around and do our thing and talk about what we do. And I do still vape from time to time. It kind of helps me, it helps me calm my nerves and focus. Yeah, I need to, at some point in this weight loss journey, I do plan on quitting vaping altogether and getting that out of the way because I just don't, I don't want to be a, a person that's just constantly addicted to something at all times. And it seems like I'm always having to figure out, you know, ways of manipulating my health, you know, to better improve my life. And, 
you know, vaping is, is a lot better than smoking cigarettes, in my opinion. It's not the greatest, but it's definitely better than smoking a cigarette. I'm not going to be burning my clothes. I'm not going to burn my the interior of my car or get that nasty freaking yellow all over the place. It's also better than chewing tobacco. Because when I was chewing tobacco, yeah, you got a spit jug. It's, it's just nasty. My wife hates it. My wife hates chew. Uh, she doesn't like cigars. She doesn't like the smell of cigarettes anymore, which is great. I'm going to actually see if I can take you guys up back in here a ways. I don't know where all these roads go in Anchorage, so we're just going to see where this takes us. See how far I can actually run this street before it peters out on me. I do have you plugged in, so I'm not too worried about that. But yeah, when I was getting over that dang, trying to get over that cold, it happened right in the middle of my fast. And I was trying to do an 84 hour fast. I think my fast was going to be closer to 90 something hours. And Todd's fast was going to be right at 84 hours. But right as I was getting into the fast, like into the first 30, 30 some hours of it, I started catching a, you know, one of them nasty colds that just starts in the back side of your nose and works down into your throat. And then all of a sudden my throat was hurting so bad I couldn't even speak hardly at all for a day. I mean, if I were to cough, it felt like somebody was ripping my throat out. And uh, it, was, it was absolutely miserable. <clears throat> so, yeah, we're just going to ride on up here and see where I can... I like to play, like even when I was a truck driver in the lower 48, you know, I drove all over, like all the main roads, and then I would, uh, sometimes I'd play, where does this road go? And that would take me into some really stupid situations. Because so, it might run me up on a, uh, a low bridge or a small type bridge or something like that. Uh, here we go. Let's see. There's the beautiful mountains. But yeah, you don't have to be very far outside of Anchorage to be out in the middle of nowhere either. That's the one nice thing about living in Alaska. But even if you are living up here, it's it's kind of hard to find privacy uh, when you're out and about because there's usually somebody else. If there's a road to get there, yeah, there's usually somebody else hanging out there. So it's really hard to find privacy unless you get way off the beaten path. And even then, it's hard to find privacy because you got a lot of small planes. Um, there's always somebody flying overhead and then you have the uh the nosy people that want to just find out like hey what's that person doing over there so they're they're wandering over to check out what you're doing and you know getting your business so and that and that's gotten worse in the last 15 to 20 years up here but yeah i'd like to find a road that takes us back a little ways <coughs> or something like that. I'm trying to think of which roads will take me up a little higher in elevation. I should have turned towards Hillside and went up through there and showed you guys some of the fancier homes. Let's see, what do we got here? Northern Lights. Don't want to go that way. down here I'm not sure where it goes so I might take you guys up into that neck, neck of the woods just to see where it does end up I mean I've lived in town here for about five six years now and uh, I absolutely love an anchorage I rarely deal with traffic jams I mean we got traffic lights everywhere but I don't have to deal with a commute in and out of Wasilla. And it's cheaper for me to live here in Anchors than it is for me to live out in Wasilla. I got a little kid on a dirt bike over there. Actually, it looks like an adult on a dirt bike. And since the pandemic started, we got a lot more people riding dirt bikes and four wheelers and whatnot all over the city. <laughs> so that's a new one for me. 
And that was the one thing I liked about living out in Los Silla is that we used to be able to ride our dirt bikes and four wheelers and snow machines just about anywhere. We could go to the store, we could go to the bars, we could go just about anywhere, you know, on a, on a four wheeler or a dirt bike. And it was fun. I mean, even though I didn't do it much, but it was still nice to just have that option available. Now, I don't know where that road goes when I turn right and how far up it goes. gonna go down here because I did want to check out one of these roads and just see where it where it takes me. That just goes up into a neighborhood. Uh -huh. So yeah guys if you're just tuning in we're you know I'm Big John. We're cruising around Anchorage uh, just playing where where does this road go? Showing you guys what it looks like here in Anchorage Alaska right now. Right now we're just this, this road started out as Tudor and once we came around the corner it turns into Muldoon. And now it's actually called Muldoon. And off to the right here, this is a big monster freaking trailer park. I don't know how people can live in that park because they don't maintain the little side streets very well. <coughs> it was actually a one-lane road in this trailer park off to the right. I got nothing against trailer parks. I live in a trailer. I live in a 1975 Redmond trailer. It's very old. Uh, it's very unique. It's where I do a lot of my filming for my regular videos. I do it uh, mainly for my kitchen table, sometimes for my living room. When summertime comes, I do a little bit of filming uh, in the entryway because I, I like it. The entryway I built is kind of like a greenhouse, but it just gives us a nice little you know, I can change the angles and stuff and make it look interesting in there. Now, the road I'm thinking about is up here to the right. I don't know how far back it goes. I hope it goes somewhere. And it doesn't cut my feet off just randomly. Okay, what's the name of this road? Boundary Ave. So it starts right here. And this is down here. They had a homeless camp set up just to get the homeless away from the tourists not too long ago. This is probably just gonna be a dead end road out here. <clears throat> but off to the left in this uh, Centennial Park area, they set up all the homeless out here to get them away. And they basically kind of ruined one of the parks that a lot of the locals have like to use. And, and the main reason they did that, you know, from the powers that be, is that they wanted to put all the homeless like you know in a confined area far away from the tourists that way they weren't just having them scattered all over town and just before uh tourist season starts wherever the homeless are camped out they're going to start evacuating them from their from their camps and move them around i don't know where this road goes i've never been up in here i have no idea how far back I can get on this road. Now I do have some uh, interesting little neighborhoods all over the place. This doesn't look too bad in here. Like these are some old houses. I'm looking around, I'm seeing many of these houses. They're probably been built back in the 70s. And I don't know if that's a road or if that's a driveway. <clears throat> well, we're just gonna creep on up here and be polite about it. And hopefully uh, we don't meet any traffic. No, this is just a, wow, this is like a, ah, I didn't even know this was back here. Okay. Ah, I wonder how much they charge to live up here. Weird. Okay, I think this is a dead end. Oh, no, I can cruise around. Man, you just cruise around these back streets in Anchorage, you find all kinds of interesting stuff. This is uh, an apartment complex. Wow, huh, interesting. You guys are seeing this with me for the very first time. Weird. Oh, there's a Jeep Cherokee. Yay. 
We like Jeeps. Okay. I guess uh, we know where this road goes now. I don't have to play this road goes this way again. Maybe you could find a hiking trail back in here. I don't know. Huh. Super cool. But now if you do this type of adventure out in uh, the valley, like out in Wasilla or Willow, um, you can met with people with shotguns. So it's not always the best idea when you live in further out remote Alaska, because some of these little little side roads and stuff take you down these little dead end roads where people just do not want to be bothered at all. And they will greet you with their shotgun. Chances of you getting shot are kind of low, even though I have been shot at before. Uh, out in Houston, I was driving a lifted Ford Bronco and I was just out looking for trails and little cutoffs. And uh, yeah, I got met with a uh, random shotgun fire once in a while. So it is a possibility the further out you get here in the city, not so much. Uh, but once in a while, you might find yourself in a neighborhood where people will come out and greet you and ask you what in the heck you're doing there. Uh, because there's a lot of people that drive around randomly and they're just scoping out neighborhoods looking for stuff to steal. I'm not one of those. <clears throat> I'd rather just go out and buy my stuff. I've had enough stuff stolen from me. So yeah, it's just one of those things. <laughs> well, that was interesting. <laughs> Went up into a back neighborhood that I've never, never even knew was there. Now that's one thing uh, my wife does is she does Instacart here in town. And she has told me stories about all these neat, interesting places that she's gone here. And when I was working for Geneva Woods, which is one of the largest pharmacies here in Anchorage, I was working as a GoTech, and I was the guy that went out and I, I delivered stuff to people's homes, uh, retirement homes, assisted living homes, uh, set up hospice type situations, trained people on how to use medical equipment. That was a super fun job. It got me out to so many different places I was completely unaware of. And, and those jobs are amazing. I mean, just like being a delivery guy for UPS or the post office, it might take you to so many different opportunities you might never even know about. There's a trailer court up here. I kind of wanted to, I was thinking about buying a home in this one particular trailer court years ago. And it takes us way back, like right up against the mountain range. I don't know if I want to go in there or not. I want to, I was thinking about it just to see because the home I was looking at purchasing a long, long time ago was, uh, it was way up against the mountainside. And that's what I wanted. I wanted something really far back, you know, that if I wanted to just walk off and go up the mountain, that's where I wanted to be. I like that. That's what I liked about living in Wasilla. Uh, I had a, two or three trailer homes in Wasilla. And I really liked it out there because you could just up and walk off into the woods. And then one day they built a retirement home, assisted living type home, pretty much in the direction that I was, you know, usually take a hike. I was, I was kind of disappointed when that happened. <coughs> they built a playground that nobody really goes to, a basketball court out there, um, like a soccer field or something like that, There's some sort of field back in there. But it was like literally on the on the path that I would take to get out there. So even though the one nice thing I liked about living out in Wasilla is the water quality was superb. That was the problem we had here when we moved to Anchorage was finding a place with good water quality. Um, that, that, that had some challenges. Uh, the first place we lived had pretty good water, but it had some plant material in it because the, the place was built on a peat bog. So it had a little bit of peat that would come in uh, through the uh, through the well. And that created a created some water type issues and stuff like that. And then we moved out of there uh, to another location. We lived in like this early, uh, early World War II uh, type home that was built a long, long time ago. The kitchen was upstairs. It was a two-story home. The ceilings and the downstairs were really low. So I was banging my head. The stairs were really steep, but it had a huge kitchen and the rent was super cheap. I think I was paying like $500 a month 
which was super cheap, and it created an opportunity that we could just start saving all our money. So we just kept compiling all our money. Then when the pandemic happened, we didn't want to rent even anymore because even though it was super cheap, we didn't know what was going to happen. So we wanted that extra added value of owning our home. So we went out and purchased a, a trailer home for cash. And that got us out of you know any responsibility or dislocating our family from a rental property. I mean, that, that was completely taken off our back. And I was super happy to be out of any rental, even though it was super affordable. So living in a trailer home, I'm still paying around $500 a month for the lot rent. So it's still super cheap. We own the home. <clears throat> and it makes it so much more fun uh, that way. I'm trying to think, oh, I know where I want to go. Yeah, there's a nice road down here that does take us pretty far up the hillside. And it's not too far off the beaten path. The 19 people in the stream, I just want to say, hey there. If you could click those three, uh, three dots up in the corner there and like the stream. Uh, but we are in Anchorage, Alaska. We're just driving around and playing where they, where does this road go? Uh, because there's a lot of roads here in Alaska. Even in the city, we got a whole bunch of roads that most of us have never even been up. And we don't know where they go. So, yeah, that's what we're going to do. <coughs> so in about another mile or two, we're going to hang a left and we're going to actually start up the hillside. And it does take me back a ways. I haven't been all the way up this road. So we're going to see what type of neighborhood is up in there. Uh, I don't know. What type of homes. Stuff like that. Well, let's see. Alright. You guys are out showing you where we're going. And if anybody's curious, I'm driving a 2000. Uh, Jeep Wrangler. It's an older Jeep. I love this thing. It's just, it's so much fun to just tool around in. If I decide to go up a trail, it's, it's narrow enough I can get in between a lot of obstacles and get up and over things. Uh, but the road I'm thinking about is right up here. So this next traffic lane, we're going to take a left. See what kind of trouble we can get in going up this way. Yeah, if you're just joining the stream, we're just cruising around Anchorage, Alaska. Trying to see what is going on. I got a flashing yellow light. Yay. That's awesome. That means I can go. We're going to head up here and see where this goes. I don't know where this goes. Now, the only problem I have with this older Jeep, it's got a 2.5 liter engine, 2.5 liter motor. So it's kind of, it's kind of low on the horsepower. So when I start heading up hills and stuff, I got to actually downshift and it's not too bad, but it's torquey. And so far it's been able to climb up a lot of things some of the other Jeeps have a hard time climbing up because it's just got such a light motor in the front end. So what did that sign say? It says a whole bunch of stuff. Prohibited activities. There's a lot of prohibited activities. There's a laundry list going up this road. So, you know, let's see what we got going up further. Uh -huh. So far it's boring. I think it gets better up here the further we go. Because they have been a little ways up this road, but I have never gone all the way up. And we got something off here to the right-hand side. It looks like it could be a park. What is that called? Fair North Bicentennial Park is off to the right. Uh, well, let's see here. Looks like they do have a bike path. Anchorage, Alaska has got hundreds of miles of bike path. Uh, you can either walk on them, rollerblade on them, skateboard on them, ride your bicycle. <laughs> there's, there's tons of outdoor-y stuff to do. This place here is Campbell Airstrip Trailhead. Okay, that was a 
little park off to the right. Campbell Airstrip Trailhead. I've never been out there. I need to take a drink. <coughs> I still have a little bit of a sore throat. So far it looks like the stream's holding on pretty good. But we are out here playing, where does this road go? In Anchorage, Alaska. And I'm gonna drive all the way up this road to see how far I can get. Sometimes we get met with a barricade or it just turns into a neighborhood or it's just a flat out dead end. You can just turn around and head back down. But you now we're here. So far it looks like there's a bunch of these little pullouts or little, uh, little parks like off to the right. That's what I'm seeing so far coming up here. And I'm just wondering what is up here further because there's traffic. You now when you see traffic, that usually means there's a neighborhood and there's homes up in here. And whenever you do stuff like this, it's important to do the speed limit and be courteous to the people that live on the road. Because if they should live up here, you know, they don't want people ripping through here acting like fools. You know, throwing their garbage out the window, act, you know, just doing nonsense type stuff. And there's another little pull out, looks like a hiking trail off to my left. So far this has been an interesting little road to travel up because I've never, I'm, I'm going to have to come back up here in the summertime. And see what it looks like. Definitely increasing in elevation. I am starting to come up on the mountain range. I can see it barely through the through the trees. Well, this looks like a really nice place. Like if you wanted to just ride around on your mountain bike or uh, you know have a nice quiet walk, you know with your dog or your loved ones, it doesn't look too bad up in here. Trying to dodge the bumps here. Even though I'm in a little Jeep, it doesn't like bumps. And off to the left, we got something here. Let's see if I can see down there what that is. Left and right. Okay, there's a park there. South Vehicle Trailhead. So there's some hiking spots up in here. That's good to know. I might actually come out here this summer and hike on some of these, these trails. Started the stream down the port, and we just moved around through town. The plan where where does this road go? It's snowing outside, so I got the wipers going, and we're heading up the hill, we're getting back into the snow. And I got a vehicle behind me. I might actually let them get around me here if I get a chance, because I'm just up here cruising around, seeing what the heck's going on. Well, that was unexpected. <laughs> My phone fell out of the holder. So we're going to have to get up here and pull off real quick. Get this set back up. I'll let this guy get around me. So I bought a decent phone holder. I just apparently didn't have it tightened down enough, which is okay. We'll get you guys tightened back in there. And I'll tighten you down a little bit stronger. Uh, please respect. Be respectful in the chat. Hey, thank you, Lisa. I, I have no time to pay attention to the chat until we get to a stopping point. And uh, yeah, we're gonna head further on up the hill to see where this goes. Woohoo! I'm on a hill right now, by the way. It's not slippery at all. Uh, the temperature outside is about 38 degrees. I have an older Jeep, so I don't know what the temperature is right now. But yeah, let's get flipped around and see where we're going. Okay, speed limit drops at 25 miles an hour, which is fine. And like I was saying before, if you're just jumping into the stream, uh, we are literally up on the hillside outside of Anchorage, Alaska, uh, playing a little game called, where does this road go? Because I don't know where it goes besides this. It looks like people are actually out using these trailheads to do some hiking in the snow. 
We are getting into some homes up here. And who knows, maybe somebody here is local. And what's going on here? You know, where does this road go? Because there's a lot of people that live in the city that don't have a car. They don't have a chance to get out here <coughs> and cruise up and down the hills and see where a lot of the uh, where a lot of the fun stuff is. And uh, I don't know about you guys, but I'm I'm really tight on money this time this time of year because work is slow. We don't have a lot of money to spend, so just trying to figure out some inexpensive ways to get out and have fun is what a lot of us do here in town. Now, when the when the snow finally melts, it'll allow people to get up in here and hike around more. That guy has a gate in his front yard. He doesn't want people accidentally driving up his driveway, you know, wondering where the hell does that road go? Because I'm sure that's happened. Alaskans are extremely private people. They don't like it when you just turn around in their driveways. Um, I used to live at a dead, on a dead end road for a number of years and I used to hate it because everybody would turn around in my driveway and then they would make holes in my driveway. Wow, okay, so this is going way up in here. I have not been this far up this road. Now the roads are wet, it is snowing a little bit. No problems at all attraction. Oh, that looks like an interesting neighborhood. These homes are, they're looking rather expensive. This is fun, okay. Now these snow banks here, these snow banks are just about as tall as my Jeep. So I would imagine it would have been fun for these people living up in here to get home on some of those nasty days. That driveway was uphill and it looked absolutely miserable. off to the left where there's no outlet. All right. Weird. You guys are going to have to like the stream. Let me know if this is a decent stream for you guys. That road says no outlet. We're just going to cruise on up. I don't know where that road goes. It doesn't say no outlet that way. We'll just cruise on up here to the end of this road and see what we can see. These are some beautiful homes off to the right and left. I am in second gear crawling up the hill. That's a newer home. Looks like it was just built. There's a porta potty for a new project. They're probably going to clean out one of these lots. Oh, this goes back a long way for saying that it's a dead end road. That road goes off to the right quite a ways. I really hope I don't have to use Google Maps to get out of here. So far I haven't made any turns, so I don't know. It should, should be pretty easy getting out. And I hope I don't disturb anybody. You know, pulling up into it. Like some of these roads, they literally just go up to someone's house near Point Knoll. I haven't even done any of these construction projects. Now, a lot of times I get called to haul gravel. This is a steep hill, by the way. Into these, into these homes that are getting built. We just don't have any contracts over here. <coughs> Super expensive homes. Now, yeah, we're talking like four or five million dollar homes up in here. This has gone back in here a lot further than I expected. I guess if you got money, you can afford to live up in places like this, because I just I just get paid to work up in places like this with a dump truck. And so hauling heavy equipment up in here would be something I would get paid to do, and then we'd bring in gravel and do uh, foundation type work. Now we're going down, that's steep. Jeep car. Around, they see a Jeep. They're always like Jeep car. It's kind of cute. You know, I don't know where it goes. This way. This is where we get lost. And I went up the hill, down the hill. And now I'm turning the other direction. Oh, there's that Renicamp. I'm right back on track. So if I were to turn left, 
a little bit. It just went in a big loop. So that's interesting. Right on. Now I gotta go down. But yeah, if you guys are just tuning in, I'm, I'm Big John at Big Man Alaska. I primarily talk about carnivore, weight loss type stuff, and today I wanted to take you know anybody that was interested on a little road trip around Alaska. And I do like playing these little games like where does this road go? And we're just up on the hillside, just out of outside of Anchorage, just seeing where this, this leads us and what it looks like. Because I don't know, I've never been up in here this far. And it's just a lot of fun to just drive around once in a while and check it out. I did want to get out and go for a walk, but I'm, I'm still getting over the, uh, whatever the bird flu, flu, cold, seasonal crap that's going around. So walking isn't a great idea for me right now. It's not too cold out here. But I don't want to get out and walk too much before I regain my health back and start feeling normal. Now I have been using this vibration plate from my pro, I mentioned that before, but it, it really works uh, to rehabilitate my legs and it allows me to actually have better balance and I can get out and walk. So if you're having issues, you're morbidly obese, your feet are numb, your legs hurt, it hurts to stand up for long periods of time, I would definitely suggest go out and get a vibration plate. Those things are they work. I mean, they're, they're not voodoo. There's actually some science behind them. There's a lot of people that are getting great benefits with these products. So, well, okay. <coughs> We're coming down off the hillside up here. My throat's getting dry and scratchy, so I need to drink some of my electrolytes. spot to pull over down here and see what's going on in the chat see if anybody's been chiming in or uh, any of my regular followers are still here I did glance over there for a second and I saw a blue wrench so that's awesome but yes we are in Alaska we are just outside of Anchorage Alaska about uh, 15 minutes away from downtown and we started the stream in downtown Anchorage you know, we moved our way around downtown for a little bit. Uh, we went up C Street, over to Tudor Road, up to Muldoon, and then we played a little game of it. Where does this road go? Um, different roads and these potholes. They really, the potholes come to life this time of year. So a lot of these potholes were from the plow trucks, and, uh, melting snow, you know, just washing out the potholes as well on the traffic. But some of these potholes are so bad in, in Anchorage this time of year that it destroys those little car tires. Like absolutely destroys them. We're, we're pointing downhill. It might not look like any camera. It's pretty steep right here. So if this was glare ice, I would be completely out of control. Uh, probably uh, making a baby up alongside this snowbank here. Trying to... Uh, look in the glove box for some toilet paper because it is a pretty steep descent here. I'm in third gear, going about 35 mile an hour. And it's just wanting to pick up speed. So yeah, if this was icy, this could be no fun, even at a Jeep. And I do not run studded tires, by the way. It's, it's something I don't like to do because I mainly live on the flat ground in Anchorage and I don't really require studded tires. I also don't like the inconvenience of having to switch over my tires uh, every season. But if I lived up here, you know, in a higher elevation such as this road here, I would definitely have studded tires, but I can afford it too. Because if you're living up here, you got money. I don't have a lot of money, so I live on, you know, us, us poor people, <laughs> not necessarily poor, but our regular folks, you know, that live down in the flatlands, we don't have to put studded tires on our vehicles just to, uh, you know, go to work and do everyday things. My wife doesn't like studded tires either. You know, mainly because we don't live in the hills. So far, we get by with Patagonia Milestar tires on our Jeeps. They got just enough siping and just enough tread 
Uh, we can drive on ice. We can also safely drive through the snow. Uh, stopping ability is absolutely amazing. Now, if we were to get put on glare ice type situations, I mean, it really doesn't even matter if you have studs. The studs are a little bit helpful on clear ice, but man, they're, they're not a win-all. You're not racing around when we have like ice, you know, like glare ice with a little bit of water on top because the studs don't even save you there. You can, you can slide across that ice just to save But All right, we're heading back down to anchors, potentially to find us another road and see where that might take us. Uh -oh, let's see. My throat is extremely sore from this seasonal bug, whatever it is. I'm feeling much better. My head's a little bit bobbly still, but I am feeling a lot better. Ugh. Frosties are a thing. Oh, goodness. I don't know if anybody else out there has a lifted Jeep, but man, when you lift a Jeep, it really makes the handling so much different compared to a regular Jeep that ride. That's, it's at the stock ride height. So when they, when they develop these Jeeps and they're at a stock ride height, they handle similar to a car. But as soon as you start increasing the height, you know, with lift kits and tires and stuff like that, it really changes the handling. So when you hit bumps and stuff, it just kind of it, it undulates over the bumps and it makes you steer left or right sometimes in a situation where you might not want to steer left and right but it's kind of if i could say what it reminds me of it, it's kind of like riding on a four-wheeler uh, so if any of you have ever ridden on a four-wheeler when you were young and you know how the bumps just handle and it just makes the vehicle pitch and roll it, it's kind of like that sensation but you're in a full-size rig so when you get on ice and snow, it makes it a little, a little precarious at times because sometimes that pitch will, will make you slide off into a ditch or into a person. So you just got to be careful as, as to how you handle your vehicle up here. Because just because it got four-wheel drive doesn't mean it's going to get you out of things. It usually means it's going to get you into more trouble than it saves you from. That's one thing I've learned when four-wheeling up here in Alaska. Alaska mud has got no bottom. So once you start sinking, that, that vehicle can just disappear. Alright. So yeah, we're getting back down to the bottom of the hill. Speed limit down here is 40 mile an hour. Let's see if I can find a spot to pull over somewhere. There's a school up here. Some mailboxes over there. Driveways. Okay. That's the fire department. I'm gonna pull over right here for a second. We're gonna, gonna check, see who we got in here. I can just hang out here for a second. Not a big deal. See what's going on. I need to find a different mount. I like it, but it let go. You guys found that out already. Uh, let's see, Lily says hi. I wanna say hi, I'm Big John from Anchorage. Uh, I don't know, I can't pronounce your name. It looks like it's Russian or Ukrainian uh, saying hello. Uh, I'm doing pretty well. Dirk, how high are you up? I have no idea. I don't have any way of knowing. Uh, if I were to guess when I was up there at the very top, it was about approximately 4,000 feet in elevation. Uh, but you can gain elevation here in Alaska pretty quickly. Uh, let's see, we got Lisa Blessed Life. You're still in the room. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you, as always. Uh, Jesus loves everyone, says Judah. I appreciate that. Uh, peaceful respect in the chat. Thank you again, Lisa. I'm just scrolling through the chat to see uh, who is in here and what's going on. Just a human, says Earl Collier. Thank you for jumping in. Okay, I don't have many people that are regular followers here. I got a whole bunch of other people here. Uh, let's see, dandruff, I think. Okay, what is, all the white stuff is snow, unless you're looking here, because sometimes I get a little chin dandruff. But yeah, we got snow up here today. 
in Alaska. It is pretty warm, but at the higher elevations, it does snow uh, because it's a little colder up there, but it's not so cold to make the roof slick. And Amber says, at Putty Cat, he has, when he gets an opportunity, uh, Putty Cat, so what? Uh, he can still read read the chat. I really can't read the chat when I'm driving around. That's something I completely ignore when I'm driving around. Uh, Roy had a question for me. All right, let's see if I can find Roy's question. Roy, uh, what is your take on those who venture into Alaskan wilderness with no real plan or, or training or gear? Um, my opinion on that is I, I don't think that they're, they're thinking clearly. Uh, when I first moved out to Wasilla, Alaska, now I'm, a, I'm an ex-military guy. I'm really good. One of my specialties is communication, transportation, land navigation. And I got lost in the woods. And it only, and I wasn't very far away from the house either. That was the problem is that it just, up here in Alaska, it's really hard. It's so heavily wooded because we have 24 hour daylight here in the summertime and the lower brush grows up over our heads pretty quickly. And we can't navigate around like the the moss doesn't always grow on the same side of the trees like it does in lower 48 the sun doesn't always rise and set um, in the east and west like it does in lower 48 so trying to find your north south east and west is extremely hard so having a compass you know as soon as you get off the beaten path having a compass is super important up here and then finding your your bearings in your azimuth you know to get you know, within a ballpark range of 200 yards of where you started is super important up here. But, cause I know a lot of people, they get out here, they go off the beaten path a little bit. Cause, oh, like, yeah, this looks pretty. Let's go get a picture over there. And then all of a sudden they're stuck in a situation where they can't find their freaking way out of here. Uh, because there's, there's a lot of hazards um, as soon as you get off the beaten path. And uh, Devil's Club is one of those. So yeah, if you're walking around like a hiker or biker and stuff like that, and all you have is shorts on, you could be doing a lot of damage to your legs. You could come out really, really hurt, really Im injured because Devil's Club is like these little poisonous type thorns that if you brush up against, um, it's kind of like a poison ivy, but not really. These little thorns stick in your skin and create a lot of irritation. It's horrible. But yeah, I would not recommend just taking a walk randomly in the woods around here because we have wild animals and they're everywhere. I mean, even in the city, you know, we've had bears walk in front of my house and I'm pretty close to downtown. I've seen bears in downtown Anchorage. I've seen moose. Uh, we got coyotes that run through here, you know, and those things are horrible, by the way. I mean, those things will kill small ch children. So, and those are been seen down by Providence Hospital. I see them when I'm out snow hauling, the coyotes running around. They will mess up a kid. Uh, better to ship your, ship your firearms from the lower 48 versus buying up there i have not researched it to find out <coughs> well if i were to bring firearms up here um yeah i would find a, uh, a a way to ship them now technically the way you're supposed to do this is ship them through uh let's say a trusted store down in the lower 48 now they can take care of all of that for you and you ship them from one store to another store when you get up here you pick it up through the store uh, that, that's one way people do it um, another way to do it is ship it in parts and pieces. That takes a long time because you got to break down everything and, and ship it in, you know, two or three different ways. Depending on what the part is, uh, you might have to do some extra paperwork in order to do that legally. So, yeah, going to a to a store, a trusted store, and shipping it from one store to the next is is one of the easier ways of of shipping guns uh, to Alaska, especially if you're moving up here and stuff like that. But there's so many guns up here for sale and they're inexpensive. You can buy guns just about anywhere. Um, I mean, there, there's, there's, I have just one relative alone that has more guns. You, you could supply an entire army with guns and ammunition. It's just, just so amazing how many guns are up here and what we have to choose from to go play with and, and stuff like that. And it's really not the weather right now for me to take mine out. So yeah, we're not. But I do appreciate everybody for dropping into the stream. Uh, if you could just hit the three dots above and click that like button. Uh, we're going to flip it around and we're also going to uh, head on and around, get you guys mounted back up here. We're just going to drive across town and see, see where else we can get to and what else we can see. And from experience, I need to tighten this thing down a little harder than I thought because it did fall on me. That sucked. 
I don't want that happening when I'm in town. So, flip you guys around before we get going. And if you're just chiming into the stream here, you know, I'm Big John, I live in Anchorage, Alaska, and we're just taking a ride. <laughs> Driving around. But anyways, okay, this road in front of me, this is Tudor Road. This is kind of one of the shortcuts from the Glen Highway over to the south side of town. And this guy, for some reason, thinks he needs my lane to turn this way. He must, he must run around with a trailer. I don't know. Oh. And we're gonna turn left. And head on over to the other side of town that you guys have not seen yet. But yeah, if you're new here, I normally talk about carnivore related topics, weight loss related topics. Uh, that's basically, you know, fasting topics and stuff like that. That's how I figured out how to lose weight. It's also how I figured out how to complete a, complete a sentence and actually do live streams like this. Because before I started all this, it was extremely difficult for me to record anything, uh, even a regular video. All of my previous videos were highly edited. A lot of times I couldn't complete a sentence, so I would have to edit like right in the middle of a sentence and try to pick up the sentence from there. Super frustrating. And if you're having a problem with, with mental cognitive thinking, like you just can't put a thought together. I found out in my situation, it was all carbs and sugar. The sugar addiction is, is what was really screwing me up. <clears throat> it was making it so I couldn't focus, I couldn't concentrate, I couldn't communicate with others. Now we're going to take this little jaunt here off to the left. This is Martin Luther. There's always like a Martin Luther King drive in every place I've ever been. It's like one of the most famous roads in, in the entire country. It's almost like an Elm Street. Now I grew up in New Hampshire and Elm Street was one of the longest it, for a long time, it was one of the longest dead-end roads in the country, and it was. I mean, it was. It went right through the city of Manchester, New Hampshire, and that road was a dead end on either end. And it was. Uh, it was also a place that, when I was a kid, we used to go out uh, and cruise with our cars, you know, uh, with the stereos, the bumpy music, the silly lights, and uh, yeah, we used to cruise the boulevard for stuff to do. That's that's stuff we don't really do much anymore. Uh, but we'd literally just drive all night long and we'd go to work and pull together just enough money for gas just so we could cruise back and forth on on elm street and that's where a lot of our friends hung out and we were always just you know getting in trouble sometimes you know not necessarily uh being the best youngsters in the world getting into fights yeah stuff like that This road here, they got a weird pitch on the road because they didn't think about drainage uh, for when the water builds up on it. So it kind of has an off camber. So in my Jeep right here, it's really dangerous coming around these corners when the road is slick because it just wants to kick the back end out. And these little tiny Jeeps spin around like a top. I found that out the hard way uh, because I was facing the wrong way just coming into my own neighborhood one day. And I was kind of surprised. It happened really fast. I also had crappy tires on it because I just purchased the Jeep. I didn't put these new Patagonia Mile Stars on it, you know, until just recently. So right now it's a lot safer to drive. Especially the sugars. The sugars just throws you all for a loop. But once I got rid of all the sugars, you know, I was able to do more stuff like almost immediately. I was losing weight. I learned how to fast and fasting helped me to get the water weight off so I could move more. 
I could actually get out and do stuff. Wow, now that I'm down here on the low ground compared to up in the hills, it's getting really warm in here. And we're in Anchorage, Alaska for anybody just tuning in. We're just riding around playing where does this road go? Now I did have enough money for gas put away, just so I'm not I'm not cutting into my regular funds for this little trip because this even this costs money. Oh, it's snowing good over here. Look at that. That just happened for a second. I don't know if you guys can see that through the lens, but it's, it's snowing. It's not snowing so much that it makes it hard to drive or hard to see. So off to my left is the mountain range. Off to my right is the, uh, the south side of Anchorage. <coughs> now, the south side of Anchorage is the newer part of Anchorage. It's where you find a lot of the newer roads, the newer construction, uh, newer homes, newer businesses, and stuff like that. And I, and I highly recommend it if you're moving to town and you just don't want to deal with all the hustle and fussle. Uh, to, Try to purchase a place over on this side of town if you're trying to move here. I mean, if you can afford a place on Hillside, good luck. I mean, those people are well established up in there. There's a lot of business owners. The people I would work for live up in there. I can't afford it. I don't think I could ever afford it. It's really expensive. <laughs> There are some neighborhoods up in there that are relatively affordable. Uh, I think Bear Valley. It's a little bit more eccentric. People that live in Bear Valley, and they call it Bear Valley for a reason. Because there's a lot of bears that wander through there all throughout the year. Wow, well, we're definitely getting in the snow now. now. None of this snow is sticking for the most part. It's just kind of coming down being annoying. <laughs> this is miserable. All this snow. What kind of You know, this is April, guys. April in Alaska. We are so done with the snow. We've had a heavy snow year and it just won't stop. It just keeps coming and coming and coming. I just want springtime to get here, uh, especially now that I can actually walk. I mean, I, 48 weeks ago, I couldn't walk. If I did, I was lucky to make it around the block in my neighborhood. And then I would go home and sit down and eat more food. That was part of the reason why I couldn't walk, because I just couldn't figure out how to stop eating food. And now that I figured out how to stop eating food, I can actually do stuff. I can have more fun. I want to get out and do some fishing trips with my wife this summer. Uh, that's one of the must-dos that I need to do. And I've lived here for a number of years. I've only caught salmon in a dip net. I've never caught a salmon on rod and reel. <laughs> That's kind of what my wife specializes in is catching salmon on rod and reels. She really knows how the how the fish run works. She knows what kind of bait to use, you know, to get the salmon to bite the lure. She's one of those type of fishermen. So she's really, really strict in her ways. But yeah, let's. That's later on in the summer. Hopefully we can get, get outside and do some of those videos because last summer I was too heavy. Because uh, when we're fishing up here in Alaska, we're usually fishing in a bunch of uh, mud. So I was too heavy to get out there in the mud, let alone do a self-rescue. I don't think I could have gotten myself out of the mud. <coughs> so, okay, we're gonna play Where Does This Road Go Again? We're gonna go straight. Oh no, that says dead end. I don't want to play on a dead end road. If the road starts off saying dead end, that's no good. 
that's not a good where does this road go adventure. If it dead ends, I want it to dead end way up in the hillside. I don't know if you can see all that snow. It is some fat freaking snowflakes. I got a friend in Kenai. He said there were some dinosaur snowflakes falling down there when I talked to him earlier. Uh, he said it just won't, it's like this weather just won't give up. Like we're just going to continuously keep getting snow. And then all of a sudden we're going to get boom summertime and everything's going to start to flood. Let's see, same here in Massachusetts. It's snowing in Massachusetts. Wow. Now, when I lived in uh, <laughs> New Hampshire, which isn't far outside of Massachusetts or a neighboring state, when I lived there, I found out that the weather there and the weather here in Alaska was very similar. You know, because quite often when we had weird weather here, they were having similar weather as far away as the East Coast. And I was like, wow, that's, that's crazy. Well, this road here, we turn left now. It's gonna get really white up in here because we're going further up in the hillside. Now, this is where a lot of the expensive homes are. The further up in here we get. So far, the roads are not slick. I haven't had to put it in four wheel drive. times throughout the winter I tried to come up here and do some filming and the roads were got so slick I didn't even I had a Ford pickup truck I tried to get up in here and I got up in here and I started having problems like almost immediately so I, I turned around went back down the hills so now it got too slick even in four-wheel drive I was having trouble getting up the hills and I'm not set up with studded tires so it gets horribly crappy up in here, you definitely want to set up with studded tires uh, when you're climbing up the hills. Alright, we got a mailman making his rounds. <laughs> now you probably never thought of delivering something as simple as the mail to be difficult. But when it gets snowy and it's icy up in here, those guys still have to make their deliveries. They still got to chain up those little, those little tiny mail delivery vehicles. And they still got to get up in here and make those deliveries. Uh, UPS has trouble. FedEx has trouble. Pretty much every company that makes deliveries up in here, we all had troubles getting up and down these hills. Sometimes we have to come down the hill and get a better vehicle that can make it up there to make the deliveries had that happen too. So far my wife hasn't had too many issues with her Jeep getting up in these neighborhoods and when it gets crappy out. <laughs> and that's one of the selling points, you know, to owning a Jeep up here or a little Subaru with good four-wheel drive because a lot of these people up in here, they own Subarus. And there's a Jeep right there. But that way they can get in and out of these more difficult to get into locations. And a lot of them that live in these homes up in here, that's how they get home. We're starting up the hill. That's pretty steep. It's got my little 2.5 cylinder, uh, four liter Jeep. Not a four liter. I don't know how many liter this thing is. It's not very big. It's a very small Jeep. tuning in uh, we we're just outside of Anchorage Alaska we are up on the hill which is just outside the city the city is literally 15 minutes away and this is what the elite people that live here in Anchorage get to experience they got a lot more snow up here uh, they get it year-round up here yeah, well not year-round but definitely not they get a lot more of it you know while the rest of us are enjoying summertime it'll actually be snowing up here but it's nice and dry down on the bottom. So it's it's kind of similar to, let's say, Colorado. You know, if you're living in Denver, Colorado, the people that live up on the mountainside, yeah, those people are getting, getting snowed on. 
they have to come down the hill to actually get away from the snow. Alright, let's see, where are we? Upper O'Malley. We're going to take this road and see what kind of trouble we can get into up here. Because this definitely goes up. <coughs> Definitely goes up and it's snowing. But I'm pretty sure I'll be okay. Even without studs. We got more Jeeps. You'll see a lot of Jeeps and a lot of Subarus in Alaska. It's one of the, the two most favorite vehicles that people have purchased up here is Jeeps and Subarus. Now I don't know if any of you have owned a Subaru. But I owned a Subaru a long, long time ago. We had a Subaru Brat when I was growing up. And those things were horribly slow and sluggish. But anytime I come up on a Subaru on the highway, it's like, it's like they're doing five miles an hour below the speed limit. So I don't know if they did something to their speedometers you know, at the factory. But yeah, we're climbing up a steep hill here. And it's snowing. Yeah, we're going to do Big John's Ice Road Adventures in Alaska. That's what we're doing today. Just keep climbing until I can't climb no more, I guess. A little bit of snow on the road there. It's all slushy. This is where all the rich people live. So if you're not from Alaska, you've never been here, this is it. This is this is where a lot of the rich people live, you know, up on hillside. That's a no outlet road. Now I got some snow on the road there. <coughs> I'm still in two wheel drive, by the way. We're just kind of chugging up this steep hill. I got Milestar Patagonia tires on here. And I really haven't put them to the test yet this year. Going around a switchback. The switchbacks are typically where you lose traction uh, because the vehicle gets a little off camber. I might lose traction here. So far, no. There's a lot of sand mixed in with this snow. A little slip, a little slip, nothing major. We're climbing up the steep hill again. April in Anchorage, Alaska. Now I don't know where to go from here. Uh huh. I guess we'll turn this way. That road's covering snow. This road says no outlet straight ahead. And we were playing where does this road go here in Anchorage, Alaska? Because <coughs> this is where all the expensive homes are. Curious about the vehicle I'm driving? I'm driving a 2000 Jeep Wrangler. Uh, we got Milestar Patagonias on. We do not have studded tires. And I kind of wanted to test them out before all the snow melts and it's completely gone. Looks like that might be where the road ends up there. Somebody walking their dog over there. goes uphill well this looks dangerous you guys want to go this way now I'm gonna have to go pretty slow <coughs> hopefully I don't get stuck in here because it's a real long walk home that says dead end One thing I've learned about living in Alaska, when the road says dead end, uh, usually don't go that way. So we'll turn down into this little neighborhood here. I don't know if this is a dead end, it might be. It might take us to another cross street. This is really steep, by the way. 
So you have to be special to live up in places like this. I'm not that special. So I just get to come up in here and enjoy it once in a while. You know, with my vehicle. And of course I'm sliding and we got somebody running across the road. Okay, thank you. They waited. <laughs> I couldn't get stopped. <clears throat> so we're gonna head on this way. Hopefully we don't cause more problems than I need to. Yeah, I was definitely sliding at that intersection back there. There was no stopping it. That lady was smart enough. She was running her dog down the hill. She saw me sliding, so she she was nice enough to stop and let me kind of uh, just get through here. That was the road I just came in on. All right, we're gonna go this way, see where this takes us. But yeah, crazy, huh? This amount of snow in April is absolutely baffling. <coughs> now it is slippery up here, so if I meet a if I meet a truck or a trash truck, because you see these uh, trash cans out here, whenever you see those, you gotta be you gotta be focused and remember that yeah, they might be one of those trucks struggling or sideways trying to get up in here. And if I go to stop on any of these snowy, snowy patches, it's probably going to slide. You always predict the slide. And I have absolutely no idea where I'm at. <laughs> I know I'm on hillside, and that if I go down, eventually I'll find Anchorage again. But like I said, I don't know which route to take necessarily to get out of here. Years ago, there's these little cutoff roads here to the right and left. Um, I was with the uh, uh, Geneva Woods, and I was driving a two-wheel drive vehicle at the time up in here in the winter time. And I went down in there into one of these little roads, and I got stuck. I couldn't get out. <laughs> I had to wait hours for a tow truck to come in and basically tow me up to flatter ground, similar to this, and drop the vehicle off so I could drive it home. And, I mean, I. It, it took me like four hours to get out of there. That vehicle had studded tires on it. Just absolutely ridiculous, some of the stuff we get ourselves into up in here. Okay, this is dead end road. Lovely. So, what are my options here? Uh-huh. I can go up to a dead end road. Upper Huffman. I know where I'm at now. That's nice. We're gonna go down. We're gonna go down back into Head towards Anchorage where it's a little bit safer. Now there's no risk at all of sliding now. This road's just wet. Tons of gravel. That's the other thing. If this road were to get icy and slick, you just simply move over a little bit. You get your tires right on where the gravel is, and then you're just fine. There's a lot of gravel, reserve gravel. And that's also something I look for if climbing a hill in a big truck you know even if I was on the Dalton Highway I'd, I'd pick the gravel patch to put my tires to go up the hill uh, because all the gravel just automatically either goes out to the left hand side of the road or it comes up on the center hand of the road a little bit and you just get up on that and you just travel on up the hill without a problem without using chains all right Okay, Mother Nature, can you please knock it off? We're, we're so tired of the snow. We just want sunny days. Okay, we're gonna turn left. Now we're just cruising along Hillside, just outside of Anchorage. You know, just goofing around, taking the Jeep out for a spin. You know, testing out our tires and seeing how they do, looking at looking at neighborhoods and stuff like that, looking at expensive homes that I can't afford. <coughs> and usually when I do this just for fun anyways, I mean, I'm just scouting out, you know, potential business opportunities in the summertime, uh, seeing who's doing what. You know, sometimes there's these little projects going on up in here and we can tie our business to whatever business we happen to do in with somebody else's contract as well. That's kind of how we integrate, you know, what we're doing. 
Uh, I got a stop sign. Upper de Armin. All right, let's go straight. Uh, that's a straight road uphill. Off to the left. Now the tricky part when driving up here on hillside, especially if you don't live here, is you don't know what the road conditions are going to be like at any given time. So if you're up here just making deliveries, it's it's just your best guess unless you know somebody that lives up here and they can tell you what's going on. There's a little bit of construction here. So they've been redoing this road. Uh, looks like we got a big crack. Sinkhole, that's what's going on here. We got a big sinkhole in the road that I just drove across and that's what they're trying to fix. <laughs> Where do we go from here? Let's go up. Up is fun because it's more dramatic. So let's just hope we don't get stuck going up. There's one of the thousand Subarus that live up here. I think if I lived up here, I would probably own a Subaru. Just because they're just super reliable vehicles that just handle this, this type of uh, elevation really well. You know, slap some studded tires on there and just go back and forth. As long as the snow is not too deep, and it doesn't usually get too deep up in here, uh, because they, they take good care of the roads, you know, within reason. And uh, people that live up here, a lot of your neighbors are going to have plow trucks and stuff, so if the road gets too bad, you know, some of the neighbors might come through and wing the, wing the snow off to the shoulder. Now, as a general practice, we try not to do stuff like that because it creates snow burns. It's just hard for neighbors to manage and stuff, so if you were to wing the snow off to the side of the road, you'd have to actually come back and open up these driveways. Now, we're going to go up this road, and it says no outlet, but I know... I know where it goes. Now this is what I was talking about early on in the stream for anybody that's actually hung on, you know, this long. Uh, this brings us up into a place called Bear Valley. Now Bear Valley is one of the more eccentric neighborhoods <coughs> that we have up in here. And it really does, it takes a special kind of person to live up in these hills. Uh, for one, you got to have a lot of money. And two, you kind of need to have the right type of vehicle, which requires a lot of money. Because if you can't maintain your vehicle properly, then living up here is, is rather pointless. And you'll become homeless in pretty quick time. So you have to have a lot of money to put into your vehicles and stuff like that. Plus, it's a lot harder to get back and forth to town from up in here because these roads do get really dramatic at times, really slippery. And we are going uphill on a pretty steep hill and it's snowing in April in Alaska. Because this is what we do here. Oh, it's, the snow's tapering off. That's nice. It's, it's barely coming down right now. Ha! Ah, weird. Now this is a road I've done a lot of construction projects up on this road, especially up on the upper elevations of this road. And there'll be a cutoff here to the right hand side somewhere. And you see that sign there? It says hazardous road conditions. The road is not maintained. That turn off there takes you into Bear Valley. And like I said, they call it Bear Valley for a reason. We could actually, some of the bears have woken up. So we might actually see a bear or a moose driving up through here. That would be fun. Again, we're climbing up a very steep hill. Now pretty soon up here, we're gonna see some mailboxes. Now this is how a mailbox 
uh, little let me see what they call it mailbox banks is what we call them uh, they have these big neighborhoods like this and to keep the uh, mailman from going directly to every door and up all these little roads <coughs> we have what's called these little mailbox banks which is like these little pullouts where all the people up above here and here's the uh, here's the guy delivering the mail right now and this keeps him he can turn around after he's done making this delivery because after this it gets slippery because the road is not necessarily maintained up in here and just for fun and giggles I'm gonna put it in four-wheel drive because I do know how steep it gets up in here and I could potentially have some issues at all if I have issues I want to have different type of issues than Oh my gosh, I'm not in four-wheel drive, I should have been. But now we're going down a pretty steep hill. And I bring heavy equipment up in here in the summertime, and it's, it's literally a crawl. We don't drive fast up through here. But I don't even know if I can get up to there's a neighborhood up here on the left hand side so when I get up here a little ways I have to turn left and go up and then it's another hard right to go up and then another left another hard left to get up in there but I can try to get up there as far as we can and again I'm testing out these tires that I got these are Milestar Patagonia tires Okay, we're gonna have to make this turn up here. This is a very hard turn. So I'm dropping in the first gear. We're making this corner. And this is, the elevation up here has me kind of laid back in my seat. Just so you guys can understand. And I'm in first gear right now. <coughs> Just poking on up this hill. And we have some pretty decent snowpack on. So far, my tires are handling the, what, what little snow we have on the road quite nicely. Now, I'm, only, I'm staying in first gear because I know that I have a hard turn up here. This is going to be a hard right turn, and it's going to take me straight up another hill. And I don't want to be shifting from second gear. you got to go really wide, and then you got to come in kind of tight because you don't want your tires to slip. Now, this is, like, really steep. Oh, it's laying me back in my seat. Middle of a turn like that, and also you have down that might not be able to stop. So getting down might be worth sticking around for because I have to go back down this same exact way. And if I should, have, well, we're gonna see how well I can get this thing unstuck. And this here is the left turn, and now our corner. So it's not a good idea to shift turns, uh, for one, because you create lurching, and when you lurch the vehicle, it tends to spin the tires. And then you create that stupid little washboard situation in a road every year. Now this here is a stretch of road that I spent the majority of a summer on. We were widening this whole section of road right up here or dump trucks in from where we just came up we were backing up here because there's really no good place to turn Bring our trucks backwards and all the way up here until we get to this gate up top uh, it's, I guess it's not a gate but it's like a neighborhood we're gonna be going up there past that but all right for anybody tuning in I'm Big John uh, from the Big Man Alaska channel. I live in Anchorage, Alaska. I normally talk about carnivore, uh, weight loss, fasting related topics on my channel, but today I wanted to take everybody out and just zoom around uh, the hillside of Anchorage. There's some actual snowpack on this road right now. They're testing out some new tires that I got on my Jeep. I do not have studded tires, by the way, because I don't live up here in the hills, but 
this is the transition time of year where it can be kind of fun to come up here and play around. But if this stuff were to get icy, like really icy, there'd be no way. I would have turned around a long time ago. I wouldn't even play up in here. Because even right now, this could be really dangerous. I guess there is a gate up here. here. The snowbanks. Holy cow. They're really tall. Good grief. So we're just gonna go up in here and turn around. I'm in second gear right now. I'll be climbing this hill in second. I have yet to lose traction. And this is a very elite community up in here with a very expensive homes. And I'm gonna turn around right here because this is the end of the road anyways. Oops. Yeah. Grind a little bit less, please. <laughs> Okay, we are up here in Anchorage, up on the hill. Uh, let's see, we are still here just listening, John. Hey, thank you. I appreciate you for still being here. Uh, we're getting ready to head on back down the hill. I need to get back down to, I hope I don't have problems at, at that one intersection before I started up the first hard pull. Because like I said, I don't have studded tires. I am in four wheel drive. I was smart enough to put it in four wheel drive. Now we're in first gear heading back down the hill. And you can see how big these snowbanks are. This is what these people deal with every single day to get to these million dollar homes. It's absolutely crazy. I'm using the brakes just a little bit. We're not getting on the brakes so much to create a skid. We're just feathering the brakes. You don't want to press the brakes too hard when coming down these hills because it will cause you to slide. And if you're in a short wheelbase Jeep like I am, it'll turn you sideways in the middle of the road and you'll be stuck there until somebody nice comes along and hooks a chain to you. Wow, somebody, wow, they put a trailer in that yard, like a 48 foot trailer in that yard over there. <coughs> huh. That must have been fun to deliver that up in here. Crazy. reason I even took my Jeep up in here was because I know the road. I know where it goes. I know the elevation. And I know what kind of problems I can have coming in. Yeah, because I, I traveled this road like a thousand times in one summer. And I even came up in here when there was snow up in here and it was a pain in the butt to move around and get turned around. kind of letting her back out in second gear coming down it's still steep it doesn't look steep on the camera i know that but it's really steep right here and it's just barely starting to level out right here we're going to start up a little bit right there is about level and now we're going back up okay <laughs> that I have to get through in order to get out of this, this neighborhood. So if I screw up on this corner here, then we're gonna have problems. And if I screw up on the next one specifically, we're gonna have a lot more problems. This one here is pretty easy to negotiate. I'm not having traction issues. Nope, we're slowing down just fine. Nothing is sliding. Oh, there we go. Whee! And now we're sideways in the road. We're gonna turn. See? Whee! Gotta love Jeeps. Okay, getting out of here might be a little bit more tricky than I thought. Woohoo! Now this is just regular, everyday, average driving that these people have to do up in here. There, I'm a little bit more nervous about getting down the rest of this hill. I like got 33 people in the stream. I figured more people would want to watch me slide into a snowbank from that. <coughs> so we got a little bit of this gravel up on top here. And I'm just trying to aim for those little bitty tight, tiny pieces. I do have the clutch in right now. Just coming down ever so gently. 
because I know if I hit the brakes too hard, I'm gonna break traction and slide. And that's gonna put me in a really bad situation. Nobody coming down? Okay, we can come down, okay. There we go. That's how you get around them tight little corners with no studs. I thought for a second, I seriously thought that I made a mistake by coming up in here. I didn't think I was going to be able to get it stuck. And this is April. <coughs> it's going to take me a minute. <laughs> I bet they don't know they're on camera. They knew I was going to have trouble getting stopped there. All right. And the turning radius on these Jeeps is just absolutely amazing. Now we're back down to normal driving. Right up until we get up to the mailboxes we passed here in a little bit. That's another thing, when you're driving up in here, you gotta predict that somebody is always gonna be coming. Or they're gonna have trouble trying to get out of some of these side streets. And if you can get slowed down so they can get out, just like these people here, they saw that out, you know, they know that vehicles slide right there all the time. These people live here, they're well aware of the possibility I could have slid out completely in the road, which I didn't, thank goodness. And they were kind enough to just stop, and I just waited. Even though they waved me on by, you know, that I could have kept going. You know, it just, just saves yourself a lot of frustration as you just try to look out for the other guy. That way nobody has problems. I think I am probably going to head home after this. Once we get back down into reality again, I will check the stream for comments or questions or something like that. But I have to get into a place where I can park and see what's going on on the screen. When, I, when I'm doing this, I have my screen set to black, so I can't. I'm not distracted by the screen. I don't see what's coming up for comments or stuff like that. But as you can see here, we're right back into just wet roads. It's actually a, a little bit above freezing here. That's why the snow's not sticking too much down here. Up there on the hill, it was, it was probably pretty close to around 32 degrees up there. But since the ground up there is, is really hard frozen, it's gonna take a long time for that, that heavy snow to melt off. And this here is a really steep hill too, by the way. Whee! A lot of bumps, a lot of frost heaves. It's really hard to find smooth road here in Alaska. And after that, I, I was thinking about taking you guys up into Bear Valley, but after that, sliding down that one hill, I don't think uh, I don't think I want to play around too much more because I don't really want to get stuck up in here. I got gloves, I got recovery gear, so even a Subaru could pull me out if I got stuck. This is a lightweight Jeep Wrangler, so it'd be really easy to get it unstuck if I got stuck up in a snowbank. I always carry a strap, I carry extra recovery gear. On the hood I have a, uh, a handyman jack, and they, uh, they come in handy. I mean, they're called handyman jacks for a reason. Get a tire stuck in there too deep, you can just pull that sucker out, jack yourself up, push yourself off the jack or drive off the jack, and get out of a lot of, lot of situations up in here. So they're kind of a must have if you want to go messing around up in here. pull out here. I'm gonna pull in that for a second. 
That's all muddy shit. Poo poo. Pooper dirty caca. I'm gonna take it out of four wheel drive. And we're gonna flip you guys around. You guys can take a look at my funny looking face. I wish I had a better clamp because this one I have to screw it in and screw it out. And let's see what we got going on here. Uh, it would be interesting to see everything when there is no snow comparison. We, we can absolutely do that, by the way, Amber. Um, we've had considerable amount of views so far on this type of stream, and I was just curious to see how that was going to go anyways because I wasn't sure how the quality, the audio quality, if it was going to be too annoying. Oh, no, not my Jeep. Uh, let's see. Imagine if you wrecked his Jeep live. Hey. That's part of the fun of doing live streams. You never know. I do a lot of live streams in my kitchen where I'm cooking stuff I've never cooked before. And once once I did choke on some food, that was pretty embarrassing and dramatic, but I'm on the internet. I, I have to just roll with the punches. So it's not that big of a deal. I'm gonna scroll on up through here. Amber says, thanks for the tour. I appreciate you, Amber, if you're still in the room. Uh, let's see. I'm still not sure you haven't, LOL. Okay, checking in from Italy, wow. Julian Ward checking in from Italy. That's amazing. Awesome. Okay. Uh, John, I'll bet crispy bacon sounds good right about now. It does. I mean, it's not snowing like this at my house. I mean, this has been a pretty eye-opening as to what people up here on Hillside, even for me, what they go through, because it's, it's not snowing this bad, and it's coming down up here. Uh, let's see. Ruben Riviera says, cool. I thank you for chiming in. It is super steep. Um, it's uncomfortably steep, especially if you had a two-wheel drive vehicle. Now, a front-wheel drive vehicle might do okay up in here, but sometimes I've had problems up in here with four-wheel drive on better days than this. I mean, it's just it's just weird how it goes because if you get run off and then you get these icy patches, sometimes you can't get past the icy patch to get back to uh, the good pavement, which even just might be wet or covered in a little bit of snow. So it just makes it hard traveling up in here. Uh, let's see. I'm, I'm literally going through all the comments backwards. I have, and it's not fun. Uh, some people panic and hit the brakes, and that's the worst thing you can do. You just let off the gas pedal, and usually uh, you can regain control. That is from Donna. Absolutely. Um, putting too much power down, even when you're sliding, is, is pointless. Once your tires start spinning up in here, it's not going to help to just spin your tires and spin your tires aimlessly. All you're doing is tearing up your transmission. You're overheating the engine, the drive line, the transmission. Uh, the tires are actually, you're actually damaging your tires by spinning them too fast. Um, so letting off until letting off to the point where they start gaining traction is actually the key uh, to driving up in these type hills and stuff. Um, that's where having studs is a little bit helpful. Um, it's not... Like I said, if I were to live up in these hills, I would definitely own studded tires on my car, at least through the studded tire season. Uh, summer is just around the corner, I believe. In May is when the tires have to come off. Studded tires have to come off. We have to go to summer type tires. Uh, have you ever hydroplaned before? Many times, many times over the years with all different types of tires. Um, I was even a, uh, basically a, a test pilot for many type of trucking tires over the years. So I was, I was testing out all kinds of uh, trucking tires to see how they worked in the ice and snow. I was even testing out some tires up on the haul road when I was working for Car Carlisle, because uh, they get some experimental tires and we get to try them out and see how they worked up on the haul road. And then sometimes we'd come back, we'd give them, you know, like, hey, let them know what we thought. Because sometimes the weirdest looking tires perform better uh, than what you would expect. And it all has to do with tire compounds up here, uh, the amount of siping they have. And I've had some tires that had zero siping, but the tire compound was so perfect that even if they had these large lugs, they worked amazing on glare ice up in the hills. Uh, let's see here. Now I leave, good life at all. Well, there was a lot of stuff going on in the stream while I was out running around, huh? Pretty gnarly road conditions. Sunny Dog said, pretty gnarly road conditions. Yes, sir, at times, they are, uh, but it's all good fun. The soccer blockers, great team. All right, uh, let's see. At Ganja, Anchorage, Alaska. Yeah, that's where we're chiming in from. This is Anchorage, Alaska. We are up on hillside. It's currently snowing up in here, by the way. So let's see if I can 
show you a little bit of outside. Yeah, it's, it's definitely coming down, but it's really not sticking to the ground right now. Uh, do you have property where you get experience all the wildlife? Uh, you can pretty much live anywhere and experience wildlife here in Anchorage. You just need to get out of your house once in a while and sometimes just look out the window. I've had moose in my front yard. I've had bear come through. Uh, just, just random wildlife is totally a thing up here. So you just never know what you're going to find. And I really need to start heading down the hill. I'm actually starting to feel kind of hungry. And my throat still hurts uh, from catching the catching the seasonal bug that's going around right now but that's okay we're gonna start heading down the hill get out of that snowy stuff and I'm gonna start heading home and I'm gonna debate on whether I'm gonna break my fast today and eat some food because I'm still not feeling a hundred percent and it looks safe to get out of here it is okay let's get out of here no telling what that person's doing. They're probably eating lunch or something. Who knows? <coughs> but I'm still trying to get over this bug. Now, when I started off the stream, I could talk a whole lot better. But since I've been going on and on for uh, a little over two hours, it's been uh, it's been a little bit harder to keep talking. But for the most part, everybody's been kind of entertained just where I'm taking you and stuff like that. It'll flip you guys around. That way you can see where we're going. <coughs> While I cough and drink water and try not to die. Now, I don't know if any of you are truck drivers too, but I have a, I have a tendency to try to, to shift my Jeep without using the clutch quite a bit. And you can do it, you just gotta hit it spot on. You can upshift and downshift without using a clutch. But most of the time you're gonna miss the gear. It's gonna sound like a bunch of tin cans. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the little trip up here through the Anchorage hillside. And, uh, where does this road go? That's that's sometimes fun. Who knows? But yeah, I got this. <coughs> I got this Jeep after losing 100 pounds, and it was kind of a present to myself uh, because I I couldn't fit. I could barely fit in my wife's Jeep, and she's got a newer Jeep, like a 2011 and the seat moves in different ways than it does with these older Jeeps. But I could barely fit in her Jeep. I was so fat, I was so epically fat. And, uh, and I realized after losing 100 pounds that I could get inside her Jeep and I could actually work in there, you know, fix some things. And I was like, man, I wonder if I could get in an older Jeep. Because these older Jeeps, sometimes they have fixed seats and they're hard for big men, like really tall, fat men to get in. I mean, especially for tall people, because I had to put a, uh, a seat bracket adjustment in here so my seat goes back an extra two to three inches so my shins don't hit the dashboard, because before I put the brackets in, my shins were up against the dashboard. And if I should have an accident, it would have totally crushed my legs. And I didn't really want to crush my legs. And hey, look, we got another Jeep. Lots of Jeeps up in here. pickup looks almost like my old, my boss's old pickup truck. Now, if you ever had a foreman, you recognize this vehicle from a mile away. And then when you see that vehicle pull up on a job site, it's like, oh, the state, it's, it's almost like the state police just cruised up on the job site. Everybody's minding their P's and Q's and hoping they're not making a mistake. <coughs> now, he's not a, this guy I'm talking about, he's a really good boss, by the way. Kind of got a chuckle out of that when I mentioned it to him last year. I mean, but, the, but seriously, I mean, when the foreman pulls up, it like puts the fear of God in you. Like when you saw those old state trooper cars on the horizon and you're speeding, you're like, oh no. And you're hoping, hoping he's not paying attention to his radar because you're trying to get slowed down. And once in a while we got, we got in trouble. Yeah, we try not to get in trouble if it's possible. Oh, hey, 
That showed up. Roy. Is that Roy? Roy Beatty. Right on, man. I thank you. Super helpful. I appreciate that. I guess this, these live streams are just fun. I love doing these live streams because I have a chance to actually interact with the community. You know, show them a little bit about Alaska. I've been neglecting my duty to get, you know, whatever followers that I have on my channel that are actually interested in going outside, outside. You know, because I usually do the majority of my filming at my kitchen table, in my house. Um, and it's been pretty reliable that way, especially in the winter time because it's cold and miserable out here. It's hard to, you know, put videos together when you're out and about on the go because it requires specific equipment to make things happen. And I'm on a budget. I'm doing this this YouTube stuff on a budget. So if I should damage one of my $300 microphones while out, or my $600 cameras while outside in bad weather, then I have to replace that. I can't. I can't afford that. Then I'm then I'm just solely dependent on the use of a cell phone in order to keep a keep the channel going. Which is totally possible, by the way. You can totally run a YouTube channel off your cell phone. And if you're interested in content creation and stuff like that, the best time to start is to start now and is to start with your cell phone and just start doing it. You know, figure out what you want to do and how you want to do it. And hit record and start talking. And the key to live streams, like I mentioned this to a lot of my friends that do live streams, the key to a good live stream <coughs> is similar to a radio broadcast. You just don't want to shut up. You just want to keep talking. You don't want a lot of awkward pauses that make people go, uh, especially if the camera's shining right on your face. I mean, you want to make sure you're just being cordial and entertaining and, and just roll with the punches because we're always going to get trolls. Um, that's just normal. That's why I got some of these people in here, which I, I want to thank every single one of my moderators from the bottom of my heart. You guys are so helpful. They don't get paid anything. They got these little blue names and blue wrenches next to their name. They come in here and they help me moderate these live streams just out of the kindness of their heart. I've never, they probably live so many miles away from me. I will never even be able to meet them or shake their hands. But these are people that have been around my weight loss journey. <clears throat> since I started losing weight and they're people I trust now and that's why they have these little blue wrenches next to their name it's because I, I trust these people I, they have some features that they can put in there they could destroy my channel you know by deleting everybody but if I didn't believe that they were well-rounded people and I could trust them they would definitely not have that have that benefit of being able to be a moderator uh, on these streams because nobody wants to see a bunch of people, uh, you know, posting a bunch of images of freaking eggplants. Because that's what they do. They do crazy stuff on here. But the, the one thing is, is that haters, you know, people that are hating or saying insulting things, they're viewers too. And I respect some of them. And I do like it when they, you know, chime in. Because if they're taking the time to actually click the watch button, <clears throat> that's creating a view. And if they're taking the time to make this nonsense as far as spamming my page, I applaud them. Thank you. You know, you're, you're doing exactly what I want you to do by spamming my page. It doesn't bother me. And it also gives the moderator something to do in the meantime. You know, if they want to remove it or hide people from the channel, whatever. I mean, it, it happens. But uh, <coughs> it's just all part of creating live streams and stuff like that. So, yeah, so uh, say thank you from the bottom of my heart to all of the moderators that are here you guys are absolutely amazing and uh, i couldn't i couldn't do these live streams as well as i can do them now without you guys and plus when you come in and i see the nice little blue name saying hey as soon as i start live stream it's incredibly motivating for me to want to continue the stream get on here and talk about stuff and for anybody that's new into the stream we got 42 people i know this stream is constantly evolving People are coming and going constantly. Uh, I'm Big John, I live in Anchorage, Alaska. I don't normally come out and do live streams just driving around Anchorage, but I wanted to take everybody up into the hills, show you guys what it looks like. This is what Anchorage, Alaska looks like in April. So I thought it'd be fun to get you guys out and uh, take you out of the house for a change, because normally I'm just doing uh, videos in my kitchen. 
I do live stream cooking videos in my kitchen. The fun part is you don't know what I'm gonna say, you don't know what mistakes they might make. Uh, this stream here, we almost crashed the Jeep twice. So, like I said, you just never know what's gonna happen next and I'm just gonna barely make this traffic light. Oh, I got it, yeah, good. <laughs> Usually when those timers on the uh, walk, don't walk signals count down to zero, that's when you're uh, gonna be faced with a yellow light. Oh, my throat. <coughs> I am having a hard time talking now. I'm probably gonna regret doing this stream by the time I get home. I had no idea that after two hours of conversation, and I try to keep the conversation rolling no matter what. I don't I don't care if it's just talking about nonsense or you know talking about carnivore topics. I just try to keep the stream busy all the time. But just anything, just keep making noise. <laughs> it's the number one thing. But yeah, we're dropping down off of Hillside in Anchorage, Alaska. We're coming back down to where everything is a little bit more flat and level. You know, kind of where I should be because I don't have studded tires. I didn't really belong up there in the mountains with my Jeep because I don't have studded tires. And God forbid I got crossed up in the road or even created an accident because I'm not up there with the right gear. Okay, where are we going from here? that we're on right here this is called the old Seward Highway this used to be the old highway that used to take us from one side of Anchorage all the way through to the other side of Anchorage and out and down uh, you know to the Seward Peninsula down to Kenai and Holbert and stuff like that this was the road everybody had to take until they built the fancier highway which is called obviously the new Seward Highway that makes it a lot quicker. You don't have to hit all these traffic lights and stuff. You can just buzz on through and get through town. Now, Anchorage is covered in apartment complexes. There's just, I don't know why people would want to live in apartment complexes or live in a fourplex. That sounds miserable to me. I don't like being, I do live in a trailer park and my neighbors are pretty close, but we're not directly attached to our neighbors. So I don't have a common hallway. If I see my neighbor is just out in the street when they're coming and going. I never liked rent, renting apartments. I never liked sharing a community hallway or anything like that. Uh, so we're gonna make this traffic light just fine. Now off to my left here, that's the Diamond Mall. <clears throat> that was the mall that I filmed in. I did a live stream in there a while back and showed everybody the indoor ice skating rink and a little bit around there. Uh, that was a pretty good time. That was one of my first test streams outside the house because I wasn't sure, you know, about, about any of this. This is all this is all new to me. You know, I've only been on YouTube for a little bit over a year and I've learned so much, especially when it comes to all the settings and features and what I can and can't do while doing live streams or making videos. I mean, it takes a lot. It takes a lot of work. It's just not making videos and throwing them out there because anybody can hit record, but not everybody can make a really good, a really good video or even do a really good live stream. It's, it's hard because you can, especially if you don't have the, uh, the initial following right off the back, right off the bat. I mean, it's hard to get anybody involved in your stream until you get you know, a base going. You know, people that you know that you know are just gonna randomly pop into your streams. And this stuff's super, super simple and super easy. It's a fun way to create content, by the way. Now we're still, we're just driving around Anchorage. This is Anchorage in April, uh, for those of you just tuning in. <coughs> and I am Big John. I talk about a lot of carnivore related topics. That's all I eat anymore is uh, meat. I like to eat meat. That's how I've been uh, regaining my health and losing a lot of weight. Now, 
also like to do a lot of fasting practices. That's another principle to losing weight. And if you do it right, fasting isn't starving. You can actually get a, a lot of weight loss with fasting to keep it off. So in the last 48 weeks, I've kept off approximately 130 pounds from when I started in just 48 weeks. I mean, that's, that's fantastic. You know, even if I don't lose weight every single week and I gain a little bit back, which happens, that happens to everybody that's on a weight loss journey. Just don't let it hurt your feelings. Because as soon as it hurts your feelings, the first thing you want to do is you turn around and you start saying, this isn't worth it. I'm just going to go start binge eating. And then you're right back into the predicament you were trying to resolve in the first place. All these little car dealerships around here. I try to avoid all the, all the car dealerships in Alaska. I don't like them. Um, they mark up the prices a lot. They, their prices are so high that yeah, you can get a warranty, you can get, you know, this or that through a little bit of extra insurance. But when it comes time to using that warranty and it comes time to using, you know, any little perks that these little dealerships give you, you've already spent far too much money on the vehicle. And you wind up upside down in your car. So I think it's, for me at least, I go out and I buy used vehicles all the time. You know, if I got 10,000 in the bank, I'll buy a $5,000 rig. And then I'll expect to put two to $3,000 into that vehicle to make it worthwhile. That way I can just drive it around. Uh oh, we got some, some interesting things going on in there. That's okay. <coughs> Ooh, that's a nice Toyota over there. Those Toyota Land Cruisers, if you can get yourselves one of those, those things are super reliable. I think they're, I think they're designed to break, start breaking down at like 200,000 miles. That's why there's so many of them around still. As long as you don't crash them, they just last forever. And if you have a good one, I'd recommend holding on to that thing. They're, they're gold. Uh huh. Alright, so we're going to head back on over closer to my side of town. Then I'm probably going to cut the stream there. We got any of my moderators still in the room or did you guys chime out already? I know it's been a long stream and you guys have been hanging in there. If I don't see a little blue, a blue name, I'm just going to find a spot to pull over and we're going to shut the stream down right there. <laughs> oh, there's one. I see one. I don't expect you to actually sit here and watch these entire streams. They're not. I just, I just thought it would be fun to get out. There's another Jeep. And show people around because, man, I don't want people to feel like that I'm just totally confined to my kitchen. Even though I do, I do feel very comfortable recording live streams. Uh, from my kitchen because I you know, figured out how to kind of make it interesting interesting enough. You know, I, I do the best I can with what limited supplies I have. Oh, I am starting to feel hungry, so I might actually go home and make some food. Although I really do want to have another 36 hour fast in my belt for the week. But depending on how I feel, I break that fast when I get home. I'm not gonna make that decision right now. I luck another Jeep. It's always Jeeps. Fun part about living in Alaska, we always have Jeeps. <coughs> A lot of people don't like Jeeps. They think they're garbage. They think they're just unreliable. They're rust buckets. And they do get rusty because a lot of people, they take them out wheeling and they don't wash them off afterwards. You gotta wash your I don't care what vehicle you're driving. If you're taking it off-road, you've got to wash that thing when you're done. you got to get all that silt and that nasty stuff out of there. It helps the seals. It helps the U-joints and all kinds of stuff. keeps it from rusting from underneath and inside out. Just wash off whatever you can. Now, the reason I bought this, uh, this yellow Jeep here is because the guy had this thing completely apart. He redid the frame. 
you put a brand new frame under this Jeep, and that's usually the first thing to rot out on one of these older Jeeps. So I was super happy with that. And uh, you did a whole lot of other stuff to this Jeep, which makes it pretty darn reliable, even though it's got a loud motor, it ticks a little bit. I'm gonna have to actually come back and watch this stream, at least part of it, so I can see you know, how much motor noise and engine sounds and stuff like that I got going on. Because <coughs> if I want to in, if I want to improve these live streams, I'm gonna have to get a different phone, a phone that I can uh, I can stream and have an external mic hooked up to it. That way I can eliminate a lot of the background sounds and have a crisper sound, and potentially roll down my windows while we're doing this. But yeah, I've been I have been watching a lot of similar streams to this. And I see a lot of people, you know, doing these drive around videos, and they're they're doing pretty well. I mean, they get some pretty pretty good peak flow when they're doing these streams. <laughs> and I wanted to get out here and just try my own, you know, see how it happens, see how many views we can get, check out the analytics when I'm done. So, uh, you know, even doing this, this this requires a little bit of effort, requires some money to run around town, you know, some gas money. fun. I mean, it's definitely been more fun than sitting in the kitchen because if I was sitting in my kitchen right now, I would totally be eating food. I'd be making something to eat. Uh, there's a couple recipes out there I, I do want to try to eat on the carnivore plane. Uh, somebody just posted a video uh, maybe yesterday about making uh, carnivore crisps out of egg whites using like muffin tins and stuff like that. So I wanted to try that possibly try that in the air fryer but I need to get some I need to get some of those silicone uh, that silicone like cupcake cookware in order to do that and I have yet to been able to afford any extra orders on Amazon so <coughs> yeah that'll be a thing here hopefully coming up but uh, let's see Amber's taking off hey Amber thank you if you're still here I appreciate you for being a part of all this. I am gonna take this moment right here at this red light to kill the stream. My voice is fading quickly. I don't think I'll be able to keep this up for another 20 minutes. And I've been going for two and a half hours. That's, that's, that's long enough. I just wanna say God bless everybody. And if you're struggling with being morbidly obese or you have questions about weight loss or what I'm doing or how I'm doing it, Subscribe to the channel. We can have conversations during live streams. Uh, probably not the ones where I'm driving around because I don't have a lot of time to focus on what's coming in and out. But I do try to help others, and that's really the only reason I'm out here on YouTube is hopefully to help inform people and help others that let them know that weight loss doesn't have to be the hardest thing in the world. Because I'm just an average guy. I'm a truck driver. I figured out how to lose weight purely by accident. And I found out it, it's really not as hard as everybody makes it sound. There are all these trainers and professionals and people that want you to buy their products. I've done all of this on a very tight budget. I've lost over 130 pounds. I've kept it off for over 47 weeks. It was predicted that I was going to balloon back up and become heavier than 435 pounds. Now, now, it's normal that your weight goes up and down, but I haven't ballooned back up yet. And when I tried to quit smoking, absolutely, my weight started coming back on because smoking triggered a lot of unhealthy type eating responses. So that was normal. That was normal weight gain. <laughs> but as soon as I got that all under control, and I got that under control of vaping, wow, that person's a douche noodle. Why'd you do that? They were gonna turn there anyways. They could have just, anyways, yeah, you guys know how it is. People just drive like idiots. They just had to get around me. Some people have a passing complex, I think. They're like, oh, I just gotta pass this car just because it's going the speed limit and I have to get around it. When I was younger, I think I had a passing complex too, by the way. Uh, let's see, I got a second to look at the screen. Uh, the only live driving stream I've seen is on patrol Minnesota police live stream. <laughs> I 
Wow, a police live stream, that would be fun. I don't think they'd want me doing a ride along. <coughs> they'd probably frown on that. All right. Plus they'd probably make me sit in the back in handcuffs, so it wouldn't be very much fun. slowly starting to head to the house. I'm not going to bring you guys straight to the house because it's just not a good idea to post that on the internet. It's easy enough to figure out where people live. It's just not something I'm going to do straight off the bat. Like, hey, this is where I'm at. something I promised the community that no matter good or bad I'll do my best effort to make a weekly update video uh, that, that's where these live streams come in handy as well because they allow me to you know connect with everybody throughout the week plus it's a lot of fun you know I like I like my viewers I do like the people that that come in they bounce into these streams they make it fun uh, they make it something that I look forward to doing. And then sometimes when I'm just sitting there at the table, you know, in my own kitchen where I film from the majority of the time, I actually miss you guys. I mean, I miss the interaction, you know, with, with the randomness of people that just come in, in and out of the streams and stuff like that. It's just, it's just so much fun. And then I also can better answer your questions, especially when I'm sitting still and I have time to focus on the chat. But wow. I don't know if you guys can really see that, that little bit of sunshine poking out on the treetops down there quite a ways off. It looks so pretty. I don't know how pretty that looks through my camera lens, but it does. It looks really pretty. But what a difference down here compared to up in the hills, huh? I mean, it's hard to believe that less than an hour ago I was almost crashing my Jeep. But okay, we're going to cut this stream right here guys I just want to say thank you and God bless to every single one of you we're gonna hit a button or two and go home for a little while we'll be back out here soon thank you guys for joining